hey, we're doing church in a way that we wish we weren't doing it right now, right? This is week number two of church being online again for you guys, and we're praying that that ends so soon. But we've been doing church online a little bit longer in BC, in fact, for the better part of now 14 months. And so I got to share this story with you because uh, it looks, church in our home looks it looks a little different 14 months into this thing. We do church online every week. We, I think we're at week 64 of doing it. So my son thinks that church is something that only happens in our living room. He's two years old. Essentially all the church he's ever experienced is church online. He thinks church online is one word that goes together. The other day, it was a Sunday, we were watching the service and he got up because he didn't want to listen to his dad talk to him for half an hour on screen walked over to our kitchen, opened up the fridge, which he's just learned to do. Not only does he open it now, he actually gets a chair over there and he climbs up inside. So now I can't see him anymore. I'm trying to take in the message. I got to walk over to the kitchen, check on what my son's doing. And he looks at me and he points back over to our living room and he says, go to church. And I don't know whether to be mad at my son for trying to boss his daddy around or to laugh that my son thinks church is something that only happens inside of our living room. Come on, it's a crazy season. And that's why we got to celebrate that God has been using you, that you haven't been held back, that you're impacting and influencing your city, your region, your province, the nation and beyond. That you just had your freedom weekend a couple weekends ago and people are going deeper in their faith and in their encounter with the Holy Spirit that you're launching your small groups because who you're doing life with in this season matters more than it's ever mattered before. And even this month, your pastors were bragging on you that you're giving away hundreds and hundreds of care packs for people just going through a tough time right now. And so, come on, we celebrate together what we are a part of. Well, today I want to bring a message to you, Experience Church, on this one word, on the word comfort. I want to start with our theme text for today out of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Some of my favorite verses in the Bible. I say that pretty much every week because I love my Bible, but listen to this. Apostle Paul writes, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Let me ask you a question today, EC. It's a little bit of a hard one. You might not want to answer this one out loud because it's, it's a tough one to actually get. Here's the question for us to consider throughout our time together today. Does God want you to be comfortable? Does God want you to be comfortable? Well, you hear that he's the God of all comfort, and so maybe you're thinking, yeah, I think he does want me to be comfortable. Maybe you've been around church long enough to know that one of the names of the Holy Spirit is that he's a comforter. And so you think, yeah, God wants me to be comfortable, but there's this whole other part of you that knows some more of the Bible that you might think of Daniel in the lion's den. And you say, well, Daniel was following after God with all of his heart and he ended up in the middle of a lion's den. So maybe at the end of the day, the answer is not comfort. Well, the reason the question, does God want you to be comfortable, is a difficult question to answer. It's actually because there's two kinds of comfort. One of them that God has called you out of and the other that he calls you to. And this matters so much right now in this Ecclesia series because we gotta understand that there's a part of your church that was designed to bring comfort to the world. Oh, you are a place of comfort experience, church. In fact, right now you're on the edge of a revival in your house and in your city because everyone around you is in discomfort. In fact, there's never been a time, I, I believe, in our lives, maybe never will be another time where everyone around us is in discomfort when we hold the keys to comfort. Come on. There's a comfort that we're called to bring, but there's a comfort that we're called on up out of. And there's a cost to doing this Ecclesia Church. There's a part of it that takes effort and work and difficult moments of pressing into tough places in people's lives. And that's also what we're here for. So let me give you a picture of the two different kinds of comfort demonstrated by a story from, you know, when I was a lot younger, when I was 12 years old, uh, thereabouts, I got asked to travel with our church youth group band. This was back in the 90s. And so we were doing some street ministry. We were going to go to Ottawa six hours away and play some music on the streets and some old school street witnessing on the streets of Ottawa and then invite people out to church. And so I was, this was my, my musical breakthrough at 12 years old. I mean, I wasn't even old enough to go to youth, but they asked me to play in the band because they needed a bass player. No one really ever wants to play bass. And so I played bass. They said, come on, 
you're a part of this team, let's go. We drive to Ottawa. I remember it vividly because I was so nervous to play in public for the first time. We get there, we set up on the streets, we get our equipment out, the drummer counts in the song, and it's like I knew nothing about music. I couldn't play a right note the whole song. You know, bass guitar, like I'm just trying to slide around, found that one note. Bass guitar, it's like all you gotta do is one note. I can't find the one note. Get to the end of the song and I'm like, I'm overwhelmed. I, I, I never wanna play music again in my life. I throw down my red Ibanez bass guitar, I go running down the street and I duck into a storefront, curl up in the fetal position and start screaming, I'm never playing music again. And you can say ah, or you can laugh, one or the other. So there I am, I'm tucked into this fetal position in the storefront. Well, my sister comes after me. My sister was also on the trip, she was a singer. She comes after me and she finds me and she puts her arm around me. She says, come on, you got this. We're gonna go back, you're gonna get it right and I'll go with you. And I tell that story to be a picture of the two different times of kinds of comfort. You see, there was the comfort I was trying to run to. When life gets uncomfortable, we all wanna run to our comfort zone. We wanna run to the place where it feels easier, safer. We run away from all the challenge and all the discomfort of the moment we're in and say, I just wanna go back to my comfort zone and maybe today, you're not figuratively running down the street into a storefront, but you know what it's like to walk away from dreams, to want to give up on building new relationships, to want to throw in the towel on a growing faith. You find yourself just saying, I just, it's been a tough season. I just want to go back home, my comfort zone. Well, that's the comfort that God's called us out of. But in that story, my sister putting her arm around me is the picture of the comfort God brings. Where he shows up in your world in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the affliction, and God brings his best comfort and does some of his best work when you're standing right there in the trial. So there's the comfort he calls you out of. And there's the comfort he calls you to. So what I want us to do for the next few minutes is I want us to investigate together. Well, where are we at? in stepping out of our comfort zone, in staying engaged in the mission of your church, of this ecclesia, where are we at? Are we living in our comfort zone? Are we stepping beyond? Well, I wanna talk practically about what that looks like. And then I do wanna talk about the comfort God wants to bring you today. So the first part I want us to look at is, is the comfort that God's called us out of. And I, here's, the, here's the picture. In Canada, you might even say that we have the idol of comfort. Like, I know you're from Calgary. And so I know you're, you're like, you're Calgary strong. You're Calgary tough. You're like, I drive a truck. I'm so tough. Like, I'm, I'm not like you Vancouverites. And, but listen, I've walked down the streets of Calgary with your pastor and every other store is another coffee shop. Another coffee shop. So I know you're in Calgary and I know you got your harsh winters and you're like, no, we're tough, we're rugged. But you, you got craft coffee every other store because you love you some comfort, even in Calgary. Come on. And I'm here in Greater Vancouver, where Lululemon took workout pants and turned them into everyday pants for the entire world. We love us some comfort. The other day I was buying a birthday present for Rachel. I went into the store and I said, you gotta give me the hippest, trendiest thing you got going for my wife. It's her birthday and I gotta take care of her. And they pointed me in the direction of jumpsuits. Jumpsuits, the fashion choice of kids grades one to five. I thought when we hit grade six, jumpsuits were over, the matching tops and bottoms, but they're telling me I need to buy my wife a jumpsuit. And so of course I bought her the jumpsuit. And the reason that this is in fashion and I see it, it's like the thing and it looks good. I might even get one for myself. The reason is designers just know that we love us comfort. We desire comfort in this generation and it makes sense and you can have comfort, you can buy the jumpsuit. The question I wanna ask you today though is when you come to the intersection of your comfort zone and God's call on your life, which road do you choose? Which path do you take? Jesus talked about this so many times in scripture he said this in Matthew 16, verse 24. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple must, and then he said three things, deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. And in essence, what he was saying is you can be comfortable or you can follow me because following me will cost you comfort. 
flip on over to Hebrews chapter 11, that great chapter of faith. It's the, it's the hall of fame of faith in the Bible. You've got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Rahab, David, Samuel, everybody's there. And the writer talks about all their hits and all the great things they did by faith. But then you get to verse 37. And verse 37 is where like, we don't know what to do with it. I don't know if I've ever heard this verse preached, but listen to this, what it says in this great faith chapter. It says, they lost everything they possessed. And then verse 38 goes on and starts talking about their housing situation. And it says that they, they lived in four different kinds of places. And so they wandered the earth living in desert wilderness, in caves, on barren mountains, and in holes of the earth. Did you catch that? These giants of faith lived in caves and on mountains and in barren places and in holes in the earth. And what the Bible is saying to us today is that true comfort is not found in your comfort zone. No, we're called to this ecclesia. We're called to this body. We're called to be on mission together. We're called up out of that place where it says it's all about me and I just got to build my house and my kingdom and my space and my place. No, we're called to build the kingdom of God and it will cost us something, but there's good news today. Leading into the second part of this message, and it's that God doesn't just call you out of comfort. He actually calls you to something. He calls you to something way better. He calls you to blessing. I want to give you this equation that really shows the picture of what it looks like to leave behind our comfort to step into blessing. So the equation is 100 minus 50 times 50 equals 2,500. Notice the start of this equation. 100 minus 50. This is the part of the journey where you leave your comfort zone behind. It feels like subtraction. It feels like something is lost. In fact, there may be things that God actually pulls out of our lives as we step out of the comfort zone. But notice the second part of the equation, times 50. This is the picture of blessing. This is where God does more in you and for you and through you than you could have ever imagined. We leave behind comfort to step into what's better, to step into blessing. We see this equation all throughout the scriptures. Jesus talked about it in Matthew 6, 33. It's a well-known verse that says, So above all, constantly seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. So I'm going to have to leave behind my kingdom. I'm going to have to leave behind my agenda and my kingdom's priorities to step out of my comfort zone and step into God's kingdom first. It takes priority in my life. But then watch this. That's the, that's the subtraction of comfort part. But watch the blessing part. Then all these less important things, that stuff that you left behind, well, that's going to be given to you abundantly. Abundantly. Multiplication. More than you ever imagined. We leave behind comfort to step into blessing. Jesus said again in Luke 18, a similar thing when he said, Assuredly, I say to you, there's no one who's left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come everlasting life. And so maybe for a season, I've got to let go of some desires and some things that seem like they should take the forefront of my life. Maybe for a season, you're a parent. You've had to watch as your kids stepped out of your house to pursue the call of God. And you always wanted them to live right across the street. But now for a season, they're living on the other side of the world or the other side of the country. We leave behind that comfort of home and God believe, come on, God brings us into something so much better. And he doesn't just promise us that he's going to give us a little bit more. No, it's many times more. Of all that we left behind, God's going to give many times more. So when you leave behind comfort, when you leave behind myself and my kingdom to step into this ecclesia, to step into Experience Church, the place where God is building you to be a blessing to the world, when you leave behind comfort to build his kingdom, he says, there's multiplication. You see, the world says don't do it. The world says stay at 100. Stay on what you've got. Don't subtract 50 and never leave anything behind. Stay comfortable. If you need anything in all this discomfort, the world says hold on to all the comfort that you've got. But God says no. You don't need to hold on to that. I want you to step into some blessing. I want you to stand out in this world. You, let behind, you leave behind some comfort. I'm going to walk you into blessing. My own life. I talked about this with Pastor Jonathan, how 
when I was building my business career. I was working as a CPA. And so I was pursuing just this business mindset, this business focus in my whole life, which is great and I'm all for it. Never thought I'd end up in ministry, but God had some other thoughts in mind. But in that season, when I believe that God started to call me out of that and towards ministry, it felt like so much subtraction. In fact, I remember that I, I told some other CPAs in our church at the time that I was going to quit my job to go volunteer at the church for what I believe would be a two year season. I expected fully to go back to business and build my career, but I just wanted to do as much ministry and focus on it so I knew what God could do through my life and I would have that focus for the rest of my life. And as I talked to them about it, they actually said they wanted to take me out for lunch. And they sat me down, they looked at me across the table and they said, you shouldn't do this. You see, not only will you lose income over these two years, you're in this early part of your career. And if you leave behind the opportunities for promotion that you will have over these next two years, you might never get them back. See, the world says, even sometimes God-loving people that just have never experienced leaving behind comfort to step into blessing say, stop short of God's equation in your life. Don't go through the minus to get to the multiplication. But I came today to say, don't stop in the middle of God's equation for your life. You're in the middle of a year of discomfort and it seems like everything is minus and all the comfort's been taken away. Don't stop short. God's got blessing for you. Don't give up. Don't stop doing the things that you know will build his kingdom and build your life. No, don't stop short in the middle of God's equation for you. God's got blessing for you as you leave behind comfort. Come on, in this Ecclesia series, as we keep our eyes on the purposes of God. What God's building in your experience, church, is so influential, not just to your area and to your region, but to our nation and beyond. In fact, just like this bridge, how it's built with excellence, how, how its pillars go deep and how there's so much strength in it, there's so much pressure that happens on this bridge. There's cars and trucks, and maybe you've heard them as I've been preaching, and you've heard the weight of it transport trucks. There's a weight on it. And that's just a picture of this season where so much is weighed upon our shoulders and so much comfort is taken away. But you're a resilient house. You are a house that's built deep because God put a calling and an assignment on you, not just for a moment and not just for a season, but for decades of impact and influence in the nation. Come on, experienced church. Don't go racing back to comfort when God again is calling you to influence. Well, we've talked about the idol of comfort in our nation and in our lives, but we've talked about how God's called us out of, we've looked at a whole bunch of scripture that shows us that God called us to leave comfort behind, to step into blessing. And now today I wanna to close by focusing in on the comfort that God actually wants to give to you. Can I just pastor you for a moment? Come on, we're family experience church. We love you. We're running with you here in the nation of Canada. And so can I just put on my pastor hat, a bit of a spiritual dad hat, and just, and just lead you for a moment as I read some text and actually call you into a place of comfort right now that God wants to give to you? Figuratively speaking, put an arm around your shoulder just like my sister did for me and say you're standing or sitting in the midst of all this discomfort. So I'll put an arm around you today and say we're in it together. Come on, I'll go with you. I'll stand with you in this fight as God brings comfort. This is not just an online service today. No, this is an opportunity by the Spirit of God to receive an outpouring of the lavish comfort of God. Listen to this text again and then we'll read on. 2 Corinthians 1 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all. Come on, say it with me. Comfort. Watch how many times we see comfort in this. He comforts us in all of our affliction. Come on, 2020, 2021, all of our affliction. What does he do? He brings comfort. Why? So that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves have been comforted by God. For as we share abundantly in Christ's sufferings, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. Maybe this year you've lost so much. You've lost dreams. You've lost income. 
You've lost some hope. It's been challenging, right? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the midst of it all, when so much is taken away, he doesn't leave us on our own, no. It's then that he shines in our lives as the God of all comfort. It's on those tough days when in my own life I've experienced God showing up in such tangible ways. His presence is so real in the midst of affliction. Why? He's the God of all comfort. Today, just as he's calling you to get up on up out of your comfort zone, or maybe you've been living there and you've just been feeling like running back to it. Today, he's, he's calling us to stay out of that place, but he's bringing comfort. Can I just pray for you right now? Father, right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for the blessing of comfort upon your church today. Father, I pray it would go deep into our hearts, not just something that we think about and see on a rational level, but something we experience so tangibly in our hearts today. God, in your presence and by your spirit, fill our homes, fill our lives, fill our minds with comfort that you are with us, that hope is rising, that we're making it through this, that we're stepping on out of it and living together in influence and assignment on the mission that you've called us to in Jesus' name. God, again, I just pray an outpouring of the sweetness and comfort of your presence today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you've been watching this message and today you'd say, you know what, Pastor, I actually don't have a relationship with God where I've ever experienced that comfort. I've felt all the discomfort. I know all the trials of this life, but I've never felt God's comfort the beginning of a relationship of faith. Today, I don't want you to wait another day or another hour. This is your moment to make that decision. Maybe you've been in church for a few weeks. Maybe you've been even in church a while. And yet you've just been staying back and holding back. And today, God's doing something in your life because you know you, you don't want to wait another day. Today's your day to make a decision to wholeheartedly surrender your God to, to God through faith in Jesus Christ be my great honor to lead you in a prayer of surrender. And it's not going to be the words that save you. It's your heart of faith. God's stirring up inside you right now. If from this moment on, you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, forgiven of your past, given a hope-filled future, and God working miracles and, and, and hope in you right now, just pray this with me. You can say it out loud. Pray it in your heart. Say, dear Jesus, today I give you my life. And I choose to follow you. Forgive me of my past, for going my own way. I turn to go your way. Thank you for coming for me. Thank you for dying for me. Rising back to life so I could be forgiven and free. Help me to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.